Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Charles. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to episode 10 of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, the Crypto Guy, and today we're sitting down with Crypto Wendy O. So, Wendy's a bit of a superwoman, a crypto superwoman. Uh, she does a wide variety of things. She hosts crypto meetups. She has a YouTube channel. She teaches people TA. And on top of that, she does marketing and consulting for a number of different cryptocurrency projects. So, Wendy, how you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing really well. Thank you for uh, sitting down and talking with us. Um, I appreciate you having me on. It's it's important. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I, I really want to you know talk to a wide variety of people, and you are actually the first woman to come on my show, so I really appreciate that. So before we jump into you know what you're doing, all of these things that you've got going on, can you just give us a little bit of background on yourself and how you got introduced to crypto? Yes. So I actually first got introduced into crypto in about um, 2011, 2012. I had a family member living with me and he asked if he can borrow mine or my husband's credit card to buy Bitcoin and, and getting on our feet. We just were able to rent a house and we were like, no, you can't borrow our credit card to buy Bitcoin. It's a scam. It's online. It's weird. Weird stuff happens online. So we're like, no. And then we kept hearing about it on like libertarian radio and all kinds of stuff. So you know, it's just, and then I eventually, I was like, I felt like stagnant in life for a long time at, at my job. And I just felt things weren't going anywhere. So I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to invest in Bitcoin. I remember um, I had really bad postpartum and my daughter was like screaming. She was like a year, like, like a year, year and a half. And I just was like, I need to stop working. I, there has to be something else. I was always into being an entrepreneur, but I just wasn't sure like how I would fit in. And I didn't know how I'd fit into crypto. So I just, I bought some Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin on Coinbase. And then that was, and that was the first time that was how I actually got into crypto. So you actually just quit your job before any kind of business venture and you just bought, bought crypto before any kind of business move. Is that correct? Yeah, I actually, my goal was to go back to school and to finish, to finish my degree because I want, originally, um, I was a bio major because I wanted to be a pharmacist. I worked in healthcare and pharmacy, um, for a very long time. I worked for, um, in, the largest HIV AIDS um, company in the world. So I wanted to be a pharmacist. I, I really enjoy people. I love giving back. I love helping. And, um, but the cost to go to pharmacy school is like $300,000. And I was like, um, no. <laughs> so I changed from finance and then I changed again to, then I changed to marketing. And that was originally what my plan was, was to, you know, just get, just to go to school and see what happens. I wanted to own my own business. I wanted, was looking into get buying a bar or like a donut shop or something like that. And I just didn't know, I had no idea that crypto would provide all these really amazing opportunities for me. Okay, so it sounds like you've you've had this, you know, entrepreneurial spirit for a long time now. And, you know, you talk about all these different things, owning a bar, opening a donut shop, and it was only kind of a matter of time before you figured out how to take your love for business and your entrepreneurial spirit and, you know, combine that with crypto. So, you know, can you, you've kind of talked about how you got into crypto. Now, can you talk to us about what you're working on? I know you've got 50 different things that you've got going on right now. I know you've got your YouTube channel, you do a lot of TA, um, you've got your meetups, your your marketing, you know, your advertise. Can you kind of walk us through all of those just so everyone gets an idea of who you are? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's a mouthful. I do a lot in the space um, because I, the personality type I have, I don't like to say no. I like to always do my best and I don't, and I want to, I want to be able to, I had the same job for seven years. You know, I, it was the same title that I was given, but I kept doing more and more and more of my job. And I was like stagnant for a long time. So I was telling myself, doing a lot of positive affirmations. And I was like, I'm not going to, like, I'm going to make something myself. I'm going to do something. So that's why I do all of these things is because I figure if I do one thing and it fails, I have like 20 other things I can fall back on. And if you don't try and you don't learn, you don't know where you're going to end up. So there, that's a little bit of background as to why I do so many things. So originally started, I originally wanted to be a trader and I am a trader. And so I started with that and I started posting my content. People liked it. 
And then from, from that, I was like, I want to help other people understand and to learn tr and trading and TA and whatnot. I want to help educate. Like, even if it's just the basic stuff, I figured why not be helpful? If I, if I know what I'm doing and I have a little bit of knowledge, why not give back? Um, post um, crypto meetups and TA meetups. So I did that in the beginning of the summer. I started doing, um, I would do a TA meetup, which is like an open forum. I would like take chart requests, talk about support and resistance. I made all these really cool documents to give to my guests. And then I would do a networking meetup. And the reason why I did that was because if you go on meetup.com, there's a lot of crypto meetups that charge. And I thought that that was ridiculous. I wanted to be able to connect with people in my community and meet and talk to people. That's why I started doing those. So from there, um, I had a friend of mine with from a, that had a YouTube channel. And she's like, let's come on. You can do TA and I will do, we'll talk about coins. I'll talk about the fundamentals. I was like, awesome, let's do it. So people really liked it. It got like 10,000 views. And I was like, you know what? If I'm doing these TA meetups, I might as well start my own YouTube channel and talk about TA. And I actually also, too, if you look at my early YouTube stuff, I would actually live stream a lot of my TA meetups. And, you know, so people can go back and see those and whatnot. Um, so then I, I had a YouTube channel. I started doing that. And then companies, because my follow following started growing on Twitter, companies started reaching out to me. They're like, can you promote for us? And I was like, and they're like, we'll pay you. And I was kind of taken back a little bit. I was like, what? Like, I can make money doing stuff like this on YouTube. Like, this is crazy. So I started doing that. And before I started doing that, I made it apparent to the community, um, to my followers, to my audience, that I'm going to be doing paid promotion for companies because I feel that focus on transparency and mass adoption because that was, you know, that those, th those things are important to me. So I did. And... And, it, you know, people wanted me to do project reviews, occasional tweets, just different type of different, different stuff. So I was doing that. And then I was like, you know what, I want to do, I want to kind of continue to do this, but I also want to do news and charts, like do like do more content because I am I can do more. I know how to do this. I know I can navigate myself around the space um, a little bit. And I actually filmed a pilot for Crypto Cake TV doing as a, I was a host of a new show talking crypto. So, and I interviewed a bunch of people. So that was, that's, all, that's another story, but I was like, I could totally do this. So then I started doing that. And then also too, when I started marketing for all these companies, I realized that <laughs> there is a lot of ineffective marketing practices that are happening in the space. There is no transparency. People weren't disclosing that they were being paid. Um, there's no real, a lot of these companies don't really know how to reach their audience. And it's just, to me, it's kind of, it's just not done in a correct way. And so I, then I opened an LLC. I was like, I'm going to open a company. I'm going to try and help these, I'm going to create marketing packages, kind of help these companies. Ever. And then I have, I work for two companies now exclusively. I work for Rapids, um, which is a P2P currency. And we're working on building all these really amazing partnerships in the space. Um, no ICO. And then I also work for monetary unit, which we are, we also, um, we're an e-commerce coin essentially, and we are we are we work with Flubit, and we you know which accepts crypto and fiat and USD. I'm doing marketing and community growth for them. So kind of just all this stuff just happened from just putting myself out there and whatnot. I know it's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, you you are superwoman. Honestly, you have so much going on, and there's so many things to cover. So I kind of just want to recap that for everybody who's listening um, because they probably didn't catch it all the first time around. The first thing I want to say is that you started that with a you can't say no, which is an amazing kind of idea and way to live when you're getting started in crypto because there are so many different things you can do and so many different avenues to take. And if you just say yes to all of it, you'll you'll be able to just do anything you want and then you can pick and choose kind of which avenues you want to specialize in. You have done it all and you continue to do it all and I I'm blown away by it. So just to start, you know, you started out trading um, and then you realized, well, you know, you have a pretty good understanding of this. Let's try to teach some people, try to help some people because, you know, when I first started out, I knew nothing and there was just so many different resources and it was all very confusing. So I think, you know, that was a great way for you to start because you had this basic understanding that you could teach to people to get them started. And then as you grew and you learned more, you were able to teach as you progressed. And I feel like you're still doing that. And then yeah. you moved to the YouTube channel. Um, I, I talked to BitBoy. I just released that episode. Um, he's also big on YouTube. So we, we kind of discussed that. I don't want to go too deep into that one um, and like how YouTube, how to grow a YouTube following. But um then you started having companies approach you and you realize that I, I hate to use the word. Everyone hates to use the word, but it's this like kind of influencer um, where you can help promote companies and projects and bring light 
to what they're doing and you have a very large audience and then kind of naturally you progress to more of this you know marketer um, and advisor for these projects where you really you created your LLC and now you're kind of helping them because there are these inefficiencies in marketing that we've seen you know we see so many posts that just kind of go unnoticed and you can kind of tell that they're paid promotions and you know they don't really go anywhere they don't bring any light to the the project so you've really had this amazing progression now kind of moving on from that do you think you could dive into the details of how you made that all work and you know you're you're one of the most successful women that I've seen on Twitter you've got so much going on um and I, I feel like a lot of people who are getting into this space you know kind of want to understand how to be like you especially women because it's such a male dominated space and I feel like women who are getting started really need this kind of role model and kind of want some help on how to make it and how to be successful in this space. So can you talk about that? And then maybe also talk about, you know, some of the challenge that you've faced as a woman in this space. Definitely. So as far as um, being successful, I am still nowhere near where I want to be. I want to, I really want to be more behind the scenes and I want to be the go-to company or the go-to person that these companies come to. And they're like, how can we grow our project? How can we do things transparently? How can we be honest? Because a lot, a huge issue in the community is everything's a scam. (laughs) Project is everything's a scam. And that's not fair to these companies. These companies, I support entrepreneurs. I support small businesses. And I feel like a lot of these projects and these companies, they are out here and they're trying to do right by their families. They're trying, they're leaving their corporate jobs to be entrepreneurs. Most small businesses fail and I want to be able to help them and guide them. Be like, hey, let's do this, but you need to disclose this. So there's, th- there's that aspect. But as far as, you know, being, being successful, there's a, there's a lot. Like I, like I said, I'm nowhere where I want to, or I, I still want to grow. There's always room to grow. There's always room to learn, but it is challenging. Like, I'm blessed because I have a really amazing following on Twitter and that's helped me get into places. The term influencer, I really don't care for that word. But at the end of the day, if companies are going to work with me and they're going to, you know, sponsor me and sponsor my meetups and pay for things for my guests and send me to conferences and to whatever so I can grow myself in my business, I'll take it. Like that networking is really important. And one of the ways I try to run my business is I'm trying to be as kind as I can to everybody and supportive as I can to everybody as far as that goes. And and yes, being a woman definitely is challenging in the space because it is male dominated. And one tip of advice I can give is that Twitter is not the end all be all. There are so many opportunities and things out there that are outside of Twitter. Twitter is great to learn information. There's a lot of shady stuff that goes on that a lot of people don't talk about. And it's Sometimes it can be accessible and it can be negative. And my advice to anybody who's trying to find what they want to do or figure out where they want to go, try things. Just try a little bit of everything and see what happens and see see what sticks and see what works for you. Because unless you try it, you're never going to know. Definitely, yeah. So a lot of the stuff you touched on, it, it can be applied to both men and women getting started in this space. I love what you said at first, which is continue to kind of push yourself and you say you're nowhere near where you want to be. So just stay hungry, continue to grow, continue to push on and always keep trying to take on new projects and, and improve what you're doing in your own business. Um, you also really talked about, uh, you kind of brought up that whole influencer thing. And I, I know it's a very touchy subject that a lot of people don't like to talk about. My personal opinion on it is that, you know, you're putting out all of this amazing free content you know, no one's paying you for that. And so if you, you need to talk to projects to pay for meetups, to host those meetups, that kind of thing, I don't think anyone should have a problem with that because if that wasn't happening, your content would go away. You would have to find something else to do. So exactly. And that's the thing. And that's, that's the thing. When I first started, I told people I'm, I'm looking for sponsors. I'm always going to be looking for sponsors because if I can get paid to travel or I can get paid to host a meetup and then they can like, if they pay me like a certain amount or, you know, pay for my travel, pay for my time, buy my guest drinks or get like, give me coins to airdrop, stuff like that. That benefits everybody because there's not a lot of people that are, there are some people that are out there throwing meetups, but there's not a lot. Like you see, it's, they're very far and in between. And also too, I have a two-year-old daughter and I'm married. Like my husband's an entrepreneur. He owns his own business and I have a two-year-old. Like, you know, I deserve to be compensated for it. Like, and I like, as far as the free content goes, I love providing content. I love doing TA. I love doing the videos, but 
you know, if I can get paid for it, I, and I'm not lying and I'm not being unethical, I don't see what the issue is. 100%. I am in complete agreeance with that. And then the last thing you kind of touched on was, you know, just figuring out what works for you. Play to your strengths, everybody. Don't pursue something with absolutely no knowledge, I would say. Um, you started, you've got a wide variety of things. You found what you loved and you found what you're really good at. Same goes for anyone else who's trying to get into the space. Um, you know, explore and then really stick to what you're good at. Um, yeah. And also too, like people are really salty because of the market and it's really, it's actually really sad because our community is so small. We should be out here supporting each other just because somebody doesn't, just because one person doesn't like what you do. Don't stop doing it. There we go. Yeah. I was going to say, don't, yeah. Don't let people dictate to you your happiness. Like if you're good at TA, do TA. If you want to do a podcast, do a podcast. If you want to do YouTube, do YouTube. If you want to go on Twitch, do Twitch. Do it or write articles, whatever it is, and then just figure out how to monetize it later because once you are once you are continuing to put content out, people will take note of it and there's different ways to monetize things and there's, there's, there's ethical ways to monetize things as well. 100%. And I really like what you were saying there where, you know, because I was going to say with you, you do a great job of just kind of pushing that negativity and that hate off to the side and you continue to just press forward with all the positivity and people have really rallied around that you know you have this great following that really seems to care about you and will defend you and i think that's because of that you know kind of community sense and that positivity that you radiate so again everybody twitter can be a bit of a cesspool sometimes there's a lot of negativity a lot of people have lost a lot of money Focus on the good. Don't focus on that bad, that negativity, that hate. Um, it really does you no good. As you can see, Wendy's thriving. So moving, moving on, you've talked about you know what you've got going on. You've talked about how you've kind of created this empire that you have. Talk to us about what you're most excited for in 2019. One, with regards to the market, and then two, with regards to projects that you yourself are working on. So as far as what uh, me being excited for the market, I'm hoping the bear market is going to essentially end. Um, I'm I'm the way I charted it. Like Bitcoin has a four year market cycle, and I think a lot of it has to do with having and all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to get into it too much because a lot of there's some people disagree, some people whatever. But I think that we're going to start seeing some positive price action after we find bottom, and that can I'm expecting that to happen at the end of 2020 or the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. But, and I think that once that starts happening and once like a lot of these projects are out here continuing to build, like getting funding and doing all that type of stuff is hard in a bear market. It is not ideal. So we're going to see a lot of quality projects come out of this. I'm not, and I'm, of course, I'm never telling anybody to invest. I'm not going to talk about price or anything, but that's what I see happening. And as far as the projects that I'm working with, the reason why I've signed exclusively to work with them is because I believe in what they're doing for mass adoption. And I think that any project that one regular person that was had no interest or didn't care about crypto involved in the space, knowing what Bitcoin is, because Bitcoin is Bitcoin is the golden standard. Bitcoin is king or queen or whatever you want to call it. But if one project could get one person in and it can change their life, then I'm with it. Like also, like I support it. Um, but as far as um, things that I'm working with, I'm just going to continue to, you know, I want really want to grow my YouTube and I want to focus on my my marketing um, consultancy and just see how, you know, just see where I can fit in and how I can help um, companies be as great as they can be. There we go. Yeah. So, you, you know, you've got your YouTube, Twitter. We're going to have links to all of those in the description. So for anyone who wants to find Wendy, just check out the description. We'll have all the links. Um, she's got meetups also. Um, so for any that are upcoming, we'll have links to those as well. Um, and then yeah, everything, everything is cryptowindio.com. I have a website now, which is exciting because I can kind of push people over to my website where I have my meetups. Um, some of the meetups that are there, I'm not necessary. I might not necessarily attend because I might not be able to, but there's, um, different people that I do support and, and whatnot. And you guys can also see what other projects that I'm affiliated with. I'm working on, um, working with on my partner's page. Um, I just spoke with a woman who does crypto taxes. She's out in LA and I'm going to be putting her on my partner's page. And of course, Crypto Space San Pedro's there. They're OTC desk. So I got all kinds of stuff going on. <laughs> there we go. Check out the website. Um, it's a great place to kind of bring all of your content together and have it in one spot. So I'm sure anyone who's listening is going to want to go check that out. 
And then you talked about, obviously, this business that you set up. Congratulations on that, by the way. I saw that Thank post you. and was was like, okay, here we go. We've got someone who's actually creating a business um, versus a lot of these other, I want to say, again, in air quotes, influencers who are kind of just, you know, posting and tweeting and getting paid for it. You've actually decided to move forward and create a legitimate business, which is a step in the right direction, in my opinion. Last thing I wanted to talk about, you know, I, I ask everyone who comes on the show this, if you, you know, your YouTube fell off, you know, it, it died, your Twitter, zero followers, you know, your business was done, you kind of started over fresh. What is the first thing that you would do to kind of get back to where you are now as this very successful woman with multiple avenues of one revenue and two things that you're just doing? It would really depend what, like, if, if it would depend what industry I wanted to pursue. Like, all the things, all the skills that I have learned while being in crypto, I can take those to any industry. And I can open my own business or I can go work for somebody. So, it would it really would depend what circumstances that happened. But just the just the knowledge and the, the life experience, like, I can, like, I've posted events. I've educated. I've, you know, I do media now. Like, there's you know, and I do marketing, I do consulting, like there's all these things that I, that I learned. And I also felt more confident. Like I got a lot of confidence from being in crypto, like, even though, you know, you'll see salt thrown here and there, but at the end of the day, I feel like I kind of found my voice and kind of found my place in the world, which I felt I was like lost in before. Yeah, definitely. You're, you're extremely confident. I kind of want to push that question again, maybe in a different way, you know, for anyone who's very new to crypto, who's an entrepreneur at heart, wants to start some sort of business, what's I guess your first tip for them. It, figure out what you're good at. Um, life is all about um, is, is is an exchange. There's a no matter what people say, people will always want something from you. Figure out what value you can add or where you fit in, and just continue to provide value in that in that aspect and and whatnot. So I w- I would just that's what I would recommend to people is just find that value to add that you're capable of doing and do it. Perfect. Great, great advice. You know, I feel like some people, they don't really know what value they have and they try to start a business and it kind of just doesn't go anywhere. You really do need to figure out, one, what you're passionate about and then two, where you can add some sort of value because that's the way you monetize. That's the way you kind of start bringing in the money. So... Exactly. Oh, one last thing is that networking is so important. Like, I actually have like extremely, extremely bad social anxiety to where I just don't want to be around people. I know it doesn't look that way, but I really had to fight and really come out of my shell to do all these meetups and to do all the media, With especially in crypto, because we are essentially an emerging market. Don't be scared to ask questions and to talk to people and to come to meetups and to network and to do X, Y, and Z. You know, stay in contact with people, build like an Excel spreadsheet and put all your contacts and like, you know, maybe quarterly send emails to people and be like, hey, how are you? How are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Like stay in touch with people because if you put yourself out there, people are going to want to help you. Like anytime I get an email from somebody like, oh, I want to start meetups, what do I do? I give them the rundown or somebody's like, oh, you know, I want to do a media kit or how do you do this? How do you do that? I'll help them with it. I'm always willing to help members in the community. Always. Perfect. I'm so glad you mentioned that. I was actually going to try to get that out of you is that networking because you've got these meetups and I want people to understand that the connections you've made at these meetups and that other people make at these meetups um, is vital. You had a tweet today mentioning I don't know if it was today or yesterday, but it showed up on my feed today and it mentioned, you know, face to face meetups and how important that is in this mm-hmm. space. And I I couldn't have said it better myself. Honestly, you need to get out there and you need to talk to these people. It's very hard to create a connection online. But when you see these people in person and you talk to them for five, 10, 15 minutes, you really do make that connection that will last decades down the road in some cases. So I'm really glad that you touched on that. Really quick, I heard a motivational speaker talk about, um, you know, helping people find their way. One of the, I don't remember who it is, and I really need to find out who it is because I tell this story a lot. But he said, if you want a secure job or you want to be, you know, um, set yourself apart from people in your industry, find something that cannot, that, that technology cannot duplicate. And he said, the one thing that technology cannot duplicate is face-to-face interaction. We have, we, yes, we have great technology. We have blockchain. We have all these cell phones, all these great things. But at the end of the day, if you, when you get to talk to somebody, shake somebody's hand, look them in the eye, that cannot be duplicated by 
any means. There's no, there's nothing that can even, that even comes close to it. If you can figure out how to master to talk to people or just smile or, you know, anything like that, you're like, you're, you're 10 steps ahead of the game. There we go, guys. So thank you so much for coming on. You've dropped so many valuable insights for people. Um, you know, anyone who's trying to get started, women who may be struggling in the space, you're, you're like a beacon to them. So again, thank you so much. Always. And I, I'm just, I'm just grateful not only to be, have this time with you, but I'm just grateful if there's like somebody that I can help just by anything like being or anything, I'm, I'm happy. I used to do that a lot in healthcare. And one of the things I was scared when I had, cause I had 200 clients that I serviced every single month that I saw, I knew their partner's names, their dog's names, their kids' names, their HIV regimen, all kinds of stuff. And I was scared once I left that I wouldn't be able to have that connection or that, you know, be close to some people like that. Like being able to help these people made it made me it made my day. And now with crypto, I feel like I, when I have people that come to my meetups that were, you know, kind of timid or didn't want to, you know, get out from behind the computer or when I have other women come up to me at like events and they're like, you know, I really love your stuff. You're inspiring. Like that makes me feel good. Like I want, I want to be able to help people. I want positivity to reign. Um, I know life is not perfect things that have happened. I come from crazy, crazy past that a lot of people probably couldn't fathom some of the stuff I've seen, but I just want, I want people to know that. And there's always, there's always, there's always opportunities there. You just have to want it. Awesome. Yeah. Anybody listening right now, you know, if you're struggling with anything, it sounds like Wendy has open arms. Please feel free to reach out to her, myself. You know, we can kind of help try to help you through whatever you're going through. She's been through a lot and I think she would be very helpful with anyone who's struggling with anything right now. All right, guys, if you want to meet Wendy and do some networking, She's got an event coming up on Thursday, the 28th of February. Uh, the event's in San Diego. It's from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, there's going to be a lot of great people from the community there. I'll be there. Um, so if you want to go and you want to meet some people, um, head over to Wendy's Twitter account. Her pin post has the details. You can RSVP with the link she's got. Uh, and I can't wait to see some of you guys there. All right, guys, now the moment that everyone's kind of been waiting for this monetary unit giveaway that we were doing. Uh, so originally it started with a hundred monetary unit that I was gonna give away during the podcast. And then Wendy saw it and she added 500 and the monetary unit team saw it and added another 500. And then the crypto empire saw it and doubled that. So like I said, we're giving away 2200 monetary unit. Um, and I plugged that tweet that I put out into a random generator and it came up with our winner. So our winner for this this giveaway is Akash R. Uh, Twitter handle Akash underscore eight. Um, so congratulations, Akash. Shoot me a DM and we'll get you that monetary unit. And then to everyone who didn't win this week, uh, don't worry about it. We've got plenty of giveaways coming up. So if you subscribe to the podcast, uh, we're going to be doing giveaways on a pretty much weekly basis. So stay posted um, and look out for that next giveaway that we've got going on. Again, congratulations to Akash underscore eight. All right, guys, that wraps up another episode. And I just want to take a quick second to ask you a huge favor. If you found anything in the episode helpful or it's been inspiring to you in any way, I just ask that you share it with your friends, family, anyone you know on social media, um, and hopefully we can help them out as well. Have a good one.